Right, in this video, I'm going to show you some uh, features of the calculator that allow us to uh, model data using a line. Okay, so this is called linear regression. Um, it has lots of different names, line of best fit, uh, for instance. And so we'll talk about uh, this regression idea, which is just the idea of modeling a set of data with a line on your calculator. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be on your calculator. In fact, we're going to do this by hand as well uh, to show you a comparison. Okay, so uh, in this example, it says the population of the United States through the 1990s is listed in the following table. And you have your years here, 90 through 99, and the population rounded to the nearest million. Okay, also have on here seven things for us to try to do to practice uh, doing some things in the calculator and learning the features. Um, and again, also doing this by hand <clears throat> to see a comparison of how this works out. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to plot a scatter diagram of the data. So on your calculator, you actually have a feature that allows you to plot data. Um, and maybe I'll zoom in a smidge here on the calculator. Um, and it's going to be right above the Y equals button for those of you with a Texas Instrument uh, calculator. Uh, it's, let's see. So turn it on. I'm going to hit, um, oh, you know what? I want to delete something out of here. I got to delete something first. Okay. So then I'm going to hit, um, second, and then the Y equals screen, or Y equals button. That will take me to something called stat plot. Oh, I don't want to go to stat plot. What do I want to do here? Nope, this is actually not, that's, I'm jumping ahead. Sorry. If you hit the second and then the mode button, that will allow you to quit any screen and go back to the home screen. So if you make a mistake like I just did, just hit second and then the, the mode button, to quit and that'll take you back to this home screen. Um, actually, what I wanted to do is to hit the stat button. Okay, so I hit stat. Uh, this is um, useful for a lot of statistical applications. Um, but the main thing we're going to do here is we're going to edit. And that's, ooh, I got some data in here. I don't want you to, well, it doesn't matter if you see it or not, but it's not useful for this problem. Okay, so. Um, so what I want to do is this stat feature then gives us uh, different columns here. You can basically set up a table. And I'm going to essentially set up this table here where my years are my X value, my uh, population will be the Y values. Except a lot of times with these tables, when you start dealing with all these years, it's a lot of numbers to punch in. And so a lot of times it's easier to kind of trim some of that off and so instead of using years specifically for my x value, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to redefine x so that it is years after 1990. Okay, so I'll just use the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, rather than typing in the entire year. I just have to then remember to adjust my model for that in the end, which I'll show you how to do in a moment. Okay, so my years here. Uh, and again, instead of using the full year, I'm going to use zero, hit enter, then one, enter two, enter three, enter four, enter five, enter six, enter seven, enter eight, enter nine, enter. Okay. And so that gives me, it's a lot faster to do it that way rather than type in 1990, 1991. It's just quicker. Uh, then in the second column, I hit the right arrow to move over to the second column. And in list two, these are these L's are representing lists. So list one, list two, uh, list two. I write my type in my population. These I don't have much I can do with. Um, they're in millions, so I've already trimmed off a bunch of zeros essentially. Uh, so I have 249, enter 252, enter 255, enter 258, enter 260, 263, uh, 265. 268, 270, and 273. Okay, one thing I want to point out before I move on is that uh, there is a, a somewhat of a pattern 
in these population numbers. Um, if you notice, there's an in for each year, each increase of one on the left, there's an increase of approximately three on the right. Okay, so here's a jump of three, here's a jump of three, a jump of three, a jump of two, three, two, three, two, three. So it's usually a jump of three with a few jumps of two in there. Um, because that's so consistent, um, that's going to give us a, should give us roughly a linear uh, uh, increase, okay? If that jump was not consistent, if it was like a jump of two and then a jump of three and then a jump of five and then a jump of nine, and then if the increase is increasing, then we have other types of graphs um, that will model this, okay? So this should be a good linear graph, just, just noticing that pattern. Okay, so I've got everything entered in here. Um, the next thing we're going to do is quit. So hit second and then mode. All right, go back to the home screen. And then we're going to hit second stat plot. While I'm doing this, actually, um, I'm going to write down some of these instructions. Now that I've got the data entered, I'm gonna move that piece of paper out of the way. Bring another one in. And I'm gonna fill in some of these instructions. So for the scatter plot, Uh, the first thing we have to do is enter the data. So we hit the stat button. So I'm just kind of rehashing what we just did. We hit stat. Then we hit uh, that first option was edit. We had to go in, into that. And then we had to enter the data. Okay. And then once it's entered, you hit second mode in order to quit again. Okay, so second and mode allows you to quit. Okay, so that's what we've done so far. Then, show the calculator, maybe I'll try to get both of these on here at the same time. Uh, then we're going to hit uh, second and then the stat plot, which is the Y equals button. So you hit second and the y equals, which gives you I need a little more space, stat plot. Okay, that's how we're going to uh, plot this. Uh, we want plot one on. Basically, this gives you a bunch of different plots, just like in the y equals screen, you could type in a bunch of different functions. We can plot a lot of different things. I'm just going to use the first one. And I want to turn it on. So I have to hit enter, select on, hit enter. And then it gives me a bunch of different ways to interpret the data graphically. You can use a scatter plot or a, a line, line graph or a histogram or all these different things. We want the scatter plot, which is the first one. So I'm going to leave that highlighted, ignore all the rest. The X values are corresponding to the list one. The Y values correspond to list two. There may be times where you want to store multiple problems or use multiple lists, and you have to select uh, specific ones here for your X and Y values. If you needed to do that, you just go down. Um, and then if you hit the second button, and then one of your numbers, I don't know if you can see it there very well, but the the second feature of each number is an L. It says L5, L6, and so on. And that will type in the list that you want there. So I'm gonna not do that, but you could do that. Uh, and then the mark. This is what your points on the graph will look like. I like the little boxes, they're easier to see. You could also use a plus or a tiny dot. Uh, either way, I'm just gonna use these little boxes, okay? So uh, I'll just say you set up Uh, the graph. Okay, so that's just sort of general for all these little features. Um, and then we're going to go to the zoom button. Oh, I had the uh, I had something else selected here. Hold on a second. Okay, so from in there, if I hit zoom, there it is. Uh, all right, if I hit the zoom button, I'm going to go to, and it's not on here, i got to scroll down. 
something called zoom stat. Okay, it's going to uh, select a specific window to accurately represent the data that I have entered if I go to zoom stat. So that's the ninth one down. Nine is zoom stat. Well, that's wobbling a lot when I write, isn't it? Oh, let's see. Go ahead and hit it, hit enter. And there it is, there's my data, okay? Um, and that's pretty good. I mean, that's a good window. It looks like it's fairly linear. Like I said, it's a fairly consistent growth um, in the graph. And so that looks fairly linear. Good. Uh, now, sometimes it's nice to know what kind of window we're looking at. So if I go to my window button real quick, I can see that my x values run from negative 0.9, so right around negative 1, to 9.9, .9, or right around 10. Uh, my x or my y values run from around 245 roughly to 277, uh, which makes sense because that's you know an upper and lower bound basically on the population numbers. Okay, so I'll go back to graph and we'll keep that there. All right, so that's getting my graph in, and that satisfies um, problem number one that I ask you to do: plot the scatter diagram of the data. Um, now I want to determine. All, okay. Let's, Put this sheet back in. Uh, second thing I wanted you to do is to determine if a linear model is the best option. I already really determined that in two different ways. One is by looking at the pattern in the data. Uh, the other one is just by looking at the trend here on the graph. Um, we can see that linear option is probably the best one. Okay. Then it says find a linear model by hand using two of the data points. So here I'm not going to do this with a calculator, I want to do this by hand. So what I want to do, um, and I'm going to switch paper, go to a, a clean sheet here, and colors. Um, I'm going to take two points on this graph, and I'm going to find the, a line between them. Now I'm going to take two points that look like a, a good line would go through them. Um, that might model this data. I don't know, as I'm looking at it, I kind of like this third point and maybe, I don't know, maybe the last point. So the third, I'll go with the third and the last. I'm just picking two. You could pick any two that you think would work. I might avoid like these two here in the middle because they're kind of close to each other and if you draw a line through them, the slope might be off. So I try to take one toward the beginning, one toward the end, where I think a, a good line would go through them. So the third point is the point um, 2, 255. Remember, oh, and, and to figure that out, um, I can go to the trace button. Remember, the trace button um, will give me actual values. Um, and so I, right now it's showing me the first point. If I hit the right arrow, it will jump to the second and then jump to the third. So there it is, 2, 255. And then that last point up there, I keep hitting the right arrow, gives me the point 9, 273. Oops, i got to show you those there. I wrote them down. 2, 255 and 9, 273. Uh, and then I'm going to um, form the line going through those two points. Remember, to do that, we start by using the slope. We know that m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so I'm going to plug in my values. Uh, 273 minus 255 over 9 minus 2. Uh, 273 minus 255 is, what, 18? If I'm doing that right. Uh, and then 9 minus 2 is 7. And let me go to second quit so I can do these calculations. I'm going to double check that. 273 minus 255 was 18. And I'm going to divide that by 7. And that gives me approximately... 2.571, I'll round it to three places after the decimal there. Okay, so that's approximately my slope. 
Now remember to form a line of best fit, or to form any um, slope intercept form, I've got to put this slope along with one of the points into my point slope formula. So I'm going to do that with the y1. I'm going to take the first point. So y1 is 255. M is this number here. It's a pro equals uh, 2.571, and I'm going to use that rounded decimal. Um, and then I want an x value of 2, so it's x minus 2. Uh, then we distribute. Uh, 2.571 minus, now if I double that, 2.571 times 2. When I distribute, I'm going to get 5.143, roughly. Okay, so I'm rounding again uh, to the nearest, to the, what's that, nearest thousandth. Um, and then, oh, I'm missing my x, aren't I? Right there. And then I've got to add the 255 to both sides. And so y is going to be 2.571x. And if I take 255 minus that previous answer, that's essentially what I'm getting when I take the negative there. I uh, hit second, and then the, where is it? The negative button will type in, basically it will enter the previous answer when I hit second, and then the negative button, right? I uh, hit enter, and that gives me a 249.85. Okay, again, rounding to three places after the decimal. Uh, so that's my model. That would be a slope-intercept form. And uh, the next uh, question, so that, that gives me question number four. That finishes off this one. Nope, number three, sorry. Uh, using two points on the data, I found the linear model. Now I want to use the calculator to find the line of best fit. So what I did essentially is I looked at, oops, I looked at, um, there's a, a bunch of different options here. I could take any two points that I think would work uh, to give me a close model, but this isn't the only model I could have come up with. There is, however, a best one. There's one specific model that will work the best for any, any set of data, and your calculator can find that one. Um, it's using some fairly advanced statistics and calculus to be able to do that. So we're not going to figure that out by hand, but the calculator can do it. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to quit, go to this as a home screen again. I'm going to clear that out. Uh, to do that, I'm going to hit the stat button. Then go over to calculate. So under the stat button, there's three menus. There's the edit, the calculate, and the test. I'm going to go to the calculate menu and then down to the fourth option, which is Linreg AX plus B. Um, before I continue with that, let me write some of that down here on this other sheet where I was putting the instructions. So this is for the line of best fit. Again, you're going to hit stat, then calculate, then the fourth option down is lin reg ax plus b. That's the one you want. Now, each of your calculators will look a little bit different at this point. Even some of you with TI-84 pluses, um, it might look a little different. Essentially, once you've hit that, you're going to hit the enter button. Um, until an equation pops up. Some of you may have to hit it one time. On mine, I have to hit it like one, two, three, four times, five times to get it to pop in. Um, it's The different calculators have different features there. And at this point, I'm not worried about the details of those. You can skip over them by hitting enter. Um, and you'll get this weird screen. So at some point, by hitting enter a number of times, you'll get this screen here. Um, so hit enter, 
and then I'll say that is times question mark. So I'm not sure it's times, you know, minus times five, but some of you might be just once, might be twice, depends on the calculator, okay? Uh, now I get this screen where it says y equals ax plus b. Uh, look at, it looks like the slope intercept form mx plus b, except they use an a for the slope, that's all it is. And they give you a value of a for the slope, a is 2.612 approximately. And the B value is approximately 249.545. Again, I'll round to three places after the decimal. And so the linear model that it's giving us is Y equals 2.612X plus 249.545, all right? And so if I compare that to the model that I just found by hand, you'll see the slopes are pretty close and the y-intercepts are very close, okay? So we calculated a pretty good model by hand. Of course, our model will be a little bit off because we rounded um, and we also use two points of the data that may not be the two points that are, uh, which may not be two points on this line of best fit. Uh, but there's my model. Now, if I wanted to go back to this page, um, I found part four. Um, then it says plot the models from parts three and four with the scatter diagram. Okay, so I'm going to go to my scatter diagram real quick. Um, remember the graph button that takes me to the scatter diagram. If I go to the Y equals screen, I can then plot these models. I'll do the one by hand first, and I'm just going to type it in. Okay. 2.612 X. Oh, I'm sorry. This isn't the by hand. This is the line of best fit. I should do the by hand one first. 2.571 X plus 249.5. 0.857. Enter. And then I'll do the one that we found with the calculator, 2.612x plus 249.545. Hit enter. And then I'm going to go to the graph again. There's my by hand line. And now it's plotting the calculator line. And you can't even really see it because the calculator can't distinguish the two, they are so close together. Um, I'll show you what it looks like one at a time. If I go in here, notice in the Y equal screen, these equal signs are selected, that means they're both being graphed. If I, if I go over with the arrow so that they're blinking and hit enter, I'll only have one of them now. Notice that the Y2 is the only one highlighted so that's the only one that's actually going to plot now. Okay, so there that one is. Now, if I did that with the other one, you'll see a similar graph. So I'm not going to go through that. So you can show one graph at a time or both. It doesn't matter. Okay, um, so now I've done the plot. Now number six says use the model in part four to estimate the population in 2005. So I have the model from part four up here. To estimate the population in 2005, um, I need to plug in a value corresponding to 2005 as a year. Get rid of this. Um, draw it in or write it in on this paper. Uh, remember, we were looking at the years as years after 1990. So the year 2005 is actually 15 years after 1990. So I would call that uh, an x value of 15, okay? And you could just subtract uh, 2005 minus 1990. Now the problem is my window here goes up to around 10. I actually need the window to include that 15. So I'm actually gonna go up to the x max and change it to 16 so that I've got, you know, I'm going further than what I need. Okay, it changes the look of the graph a little bit. And then I'm going to go to my Calculate menu, which we saw in a previous video. And I'm going to go to Value, hit Enter. 
and I'm going to type in the 15. Okay, now the, the graph is going up off the screen here, so it's not going to show me the cursor, but it's up here somewhere. But it gives me the value of 288. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep, Y2. So right up here on the top left, it's telling you which function it's using. And right now it's Y2, which is the one I want. And I got 288.725. Again, we're rounding all these to the nearest million, so I'm just going to call that uh, 289. So Y is approximately 289, which means the population uh, in 2005 was approximately 289 million. Okay, so whoops. There you go, I can see that. All right, now the last thing that I'm asking you to do in this problem is to interpret the slope and the y-intercept, okay? Interpreting these things is kind of interesting. You're looking at some numbers here, but they have a meaning behind them. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to that line of best fit, whoops, from uh, the, um, Line of best fit from the calculator. It had a slope of 2.612 and a y-intercept of 249.5, oh yeah, 545. Okay, and now I wanna interpret those. Well, the m value is the slope. It's positive, so it represents an increase and it's increasing by approximately 2.6 million people per year. Okay, so a slope is always a rate. It will be some sort of, it will have a, a unit with a per in them. And the per represents the, um, it's a fraction where the, the numerator is the y value and the denominator is the x value. That's where you get your slope from, right? Rise over run. And so the rise gives you the population, the y value, and the run is your x, which is your years. So its population is uh, people per year as an increase. So the slope, to interpret that, I would say uh, the population is increasing And that's an important word because this is positive. If it was, if it was negative, it'd be decreasing. Population is increasing at a rate of 2.6 million people uh, per year. Okay, so that was the rate of increase through the 90s. The y-intercept then gives us the population um, at the beginning, which in our case at year zero is 1990, right? We corresponded zero to 1990. So the y-intercept is always the year zero. Um, so we'd say in 1990, the population was 200, this is uh, about what, 250 million, if I round it. Which is off a little bit from what we had um, in the data. Data said 249 million. Uh, but again, this is an estimate, so we're off just a little bit uh, because the line doesn't quite go through all of the data points. And really, we're only off by half a million, and that other value was rounded to the nearest million, so we could have been pretty close. It's hard to tell. Okay. All right. So that gives us a pretty good understanding, I think, of um, how to work with the line of best fit. Again, uh, just so you can see the instructions here on using the calculator. This gives you uh, how, to, how to enter the data, how to set up your scatter plot or scatter diagrams called different things. Um, and then how to find your line of best fit. So all these things are important and you'll need to know how to use your calculator um, 
as, uh, as we progress through the course and on the next test.